Hey, how you guys doing this morning? This is Pastor Teddy from Cityscape Church here in Benicia, California. Uh, first of all, I just want to start off by saying um, congratulations, 16 years in the book. How awesome and cool is that? I want to congratulate um, the McBride family for the awesome work that they are doing, not only in Berkeley, but around the world. You guys are awesome. I want to encourage you guys to just keep going, keep going, keep going, and I can't wait to see all what all that God is going to do through you guys through the next coming years and all that stuff. But um, to today, um, as I talk, um, I, well, let me get you guys the verse turn to Galatians chapter six, Galatians chapter six. And we're gonna be looking at three verses, um, verse seven um, to verse 10, um, but Galatians chapter six. And while you guys are looking that up, um, today I'm going to be talking about um, us looking at life a little bit different, not looking at it from the area of a sprint, but looking at it from the point of view of a marathon. And so I'm going to give you three, I believe, tips to help us to be able to live a marathon on type of life. Us understanding it's not about the quickness of how fast we get there. It's not even really too much about um, getting there. It's, it's, it's about the process that God uses to get us there, to get us to the final destination, to get us to that goal in which we've set, to get us to uh, um, the end result, okay? So today, as we talk about this idea of marathon, let's, let's look at Galatians chapter 6, verses 7. It says, do not be deceived. God, God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows, or a woman reaps what they sow. Whoever sows to please their flesh from the flesh will reap destruction. Whoever sows to please the spirit from the spirit will reap eternal life. What you reap is what you sow. Verse nine, it says, let us not become weary in doing good. Okay, here goes the meat of what we're gonna be talking about today. Do not become weary of doing good for at the proper time you will reap a harvest if we do not give up, okay? This contention, you reap your harvest, you getting that harvest, you getting that blessing, you experiencing that thing in life is all dependent upon us not giving up. So let's not give up. But in order for us not to give up, we have to understand that life isn't a sprint, but life is a marathon. Verse 10, it says, therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, not just the people we like, not the people who just look like us, but to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. Okay, well, let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, we thank you, Lord. We thank you that we get an opportunity to open up your words, look at it, and God, I pray, Father, that it would speak to us, Lord. It would speak to us and help us to become better, Lord. Help us to become better individuals who can have an impact upon our world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So, so the, there, there are two things in which you know we know um, from the author about um, the, 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 this whole idea of doing good, about doing good. The first thing we know is that doing good will always cost us something. If you have an intent or you have a desire to do good, it will always cost you something. It might be time. It might be um, your personal resources. It might cost you a dream. It might cost you, uh, um, uh, what other things it can cost? It can cost you a lot of things, a lot of variety of different things. I know for me personally, you know, you know, one of the things that, that, that I do is that I go into juvenile detention centers and I mentor young men. And what it does is it costs me gas. It costs me uh, uh, um, resources to, you know, in a sense, sense of, you know, there's things that I purchase for these young men. There's, there's books, there's, uh, um, you know, uh, notebooks, there's, there's different little things in which they want. You know, sometimes it's just about bringing them food. It, it's, it costs me something, okay, to be able to do good, to be able to pour into these young men, okay? It will always cost you something, uncomfortability, that is a cost. It will cost you something in order for you to accomplish the things and to keep doing the good that you want to do. The second thing that, that the author really lets us know isn't is that and it's the part that we all love is that as a result of us doing good 
it there will be a reward as a result of us doing good if we do not give up. So the result of us investing that time, the result of us investing those resources will produce a reward. And how many of you guys know that that that's not the only reason why you do it, but you know it's a healthy motivation to keep you doing it. Okay. Um, so to, to today, you know, as we look at that, you know, it, it's it's also very important for us to know that when we are doing the good that God has called us to do, that it can be very wearisome. I don't know if that's the word wearisome, but but it can become weary. It can become very tiring. It can be it can be draining, you know, at times. And really, the the. I guess the challenge is for us to get outside of that or to press through that weariness, to get pressed through that tiredness, to, to, to move forward. And, and, and really, you know, that can be hard, you know, but I believe that one of the things that helps us to be able to get through that is the idea of preparation. How you prepare for a sprint is different than how you prepare for a marathon. Now I've, you know, you know, I mean, to be honest with you, I've never had done a marathon, but I have done sprinting b b before. And I know that in the preparation for the two is different. And I believe that as believers, we need to understand that the preparation that God is calling us to is not a preparation for sprints, but a preparation for the long haul, a marathon. Understanding that this, the work in which we are doing, the good that we are trying to do is going to take time. It is going to take conversation after conversation after conversation. It's going to take meeting after meeting after meeting. It's going to take years of preparation in order for us, years of delivering, de years of sacrifice. It's going to take maybe even generations for us to see the fruit in which we want to see in some areas of not only our lives, but the lives of those in which we are doing good for. Okay. And, and, and it's not, you know, like, 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 like this is the, the deal. When it, when I, when I go into the juvenile detention centers, one of the things that, that, I'm, that I'm, that I'm always having to remind myself is that today I want to be in an in influence today. I want to make an impact, but I've got to understand that it's not just today, but it's the impact that I had last week, today, the next week, and a week after that, and a week after that, that is going to help these young men to see and experience the breakthrough in which they want to see in their lives. And I think as believers, we have got to constantly remind ourselves, yes, I can have the conversation. Yes, in the con in the conversation, I can move mountains. Yes, in that congregation, in, in that conversation, in that one moment, God can do something absolutely amazing, but I believe that God is going to use the moments of our lives, the experiences that we have that are actually going to bring real dynamic change in our community. So it's not just about showing up and blowing things up, but it's about, you know, it, it, the Bible says is that we are more than conquerors. Is that, and, and I always, you know, the next step or my question that comes into that is, well, then if we're more than conquerors, what are we? And I believe that we are the builders of people's lives. We are the builders of destinies. We are the builders of dreams. And in order to build something uh, of quality and to build something uh, that is going to last through the test of time, it takes time. It takes more than just one moment to do it. Wouldn't it be awesome if you like, you know, if, if the construction workers just showed up one day and then they worked for eight hours, eight hours straight, maybe 10 hours, we'll give, them, well, we'll give them 12 hours and then boom, a building was there. How many of you guys would not want to live in that type of building? But when you know that a building takes months to build and you see the progression of the, you, you know, the foundation being laid, the, the, the walls going up, the, the, the interior being de designed and put everything, putting in furniture being put in, the lights being installed, electricity, the plumbing, all that stuff, then you're all of a sudden, you're like, man, I can trust in the fact that I can either live in that or I can work inside of that building. Why? Because you know that it's being prepared. And I believe it's the same thing with our lives. We cannot get overwhelmed by the lack of maybe movement that we're not seeing in a certain area, but let's be people who are listening to the advice of the author of Galatians. And when he says, let us not do, become weary of doing good for at the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we do 
not give up. But see, the thing is, I love how it, there's a connection there. He, he, he's, he's telling us that weariness leads to be wanting or the desire to give up. So if we want to remove the desire to give up, we've got to make sure that we never grow weary. And, if we, and so today, what I'm going to talk about is some things to help us to not grow weary because remember, we're not just running a sprint, we're running a marathon. And so I'm going to use some of the key components, there's three key, key components that a marathon um, runner uses that we can use in the practice inside of our lives. The first thing is that a marathon runner doesn't just show up and then all of a sudden they run a race. What they do is, is they put in the work. They work out on a daily basis. They run a certain amount of miles and then they next day they run another certain amount of miles. Then the next day they run another certain amount of miles. And I believe for us what we have to do is see our lives in that same good type of work. We've got to do good things, but do not wear yourself out by doing good things. Maybe you're, you're someone you're new to doing good things, okay? So, you know, do what, an hour, a week of doing good things, okay? Then the next week, go two hours of doing good things things, okay? You know, you know, you, you understand what I'm saying? You're building this up. You don't just all of a sudden just show up and be like, okay, I'm the person, I'm going to volunteer eight hours a day. You know, you know no, you're going to wear yourself out, okay? Especially when you get into environments where there is a heavy or there is a lot of need, it will overwhelm you just like that. And so it's about exposure, but about exposing yourself on a gradual basis, okay? Um, it says good works gives you confidence and builds up your stamina. I would go on to say that good works aren't making you tired, that it's making you, what's making you tired is spending your time on meaningless things, okay? See, the thing is, is that when you finally find that thing that is your thing of doing good works, it really feeds you. It, 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 it brings you energy. It brings you just the level of confidence and, and, and stamina. You know, I, I let, we, 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 we get a picture of this in the Bible where Jesus is um, hanging out at a well, okay? So his disciples go and they go get something physically to eat because he, he's hungry. He's physically, he's hungry, okay? They go, he's waiting for them to come back with the, the food while he's there. He um, has an encounter with this woman at the well, okay? And the disciples come back, the woman leaves, and, and, and his re response to them, and they, and they go, well, aren't you hungry? And his response to them is, I have eaten, I have eaten already. I've become satisfied already. And that's when you find the good work that you should be doing on this planet that God has made you to do, you come out of it refreshed. You might be a little bit drained because you've poured, you've poured, you've poured, but you come out feeling a, a, a good type of refresh. You, I mean, you, a, a good type of weariness. You feel a goodness about you. You know, I know a lot of times when I'll go into the juvenile tender centers, I don't want to go. You, you know, can I, can I be honest with you? Because I'm tired. You know, uh, maybe I just got off work or maybe I've been doing this all day or doing that all day. Maybe I just had a, a, a very interesting conversation with somebody in my world that has drained me. But yet I want you to know that every single time I've left that conversation with with the person that I'm mentoring, that I'm pouring into, even if I just gave it all to them, if I gave it all to them and everything, you know what I'm saying? Even if I poured out, I always leave refreshed. Why? Because I'm doing the good work in which God has called me to do. When I, when I love something, it can still be draining, but the drain is different when it's something that I love. When it's something that I love, it is totally, completely different. And I want to encourage each and every single one of us in order for us to work out the way we want to, find the right workout for you. Find the right good thing that you need to be doing. Don't just stop doing good things. Maybe you, you're an accountant and doing good things for you is volunteering hours at a nonprofit, you know, doing their books. You, you know, I don't know. Find the good thing for you. For me, that would be absolutely horrible. That would not be a good thing, okay? Good thing for me is getting busy talking with people, being around people, you know, being able to give people, you know, a, a, a smile, give them, a, you know, just a moment, of just, you know, just joy and, and peace and letting them know that it's going to be okay. You know, that's the kind of stuff that 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 fuels me and makes me better. James chapter 1 verse 12 says, Bless the man who remains steadfast under trial, for when he has stood the 
test, he will receive the crown of life, which God has promised to those who love him. I don't know about you, but I want to be the one who receives the crown of life. I just do. You know, I do. I, I, I want to be on that day when I get to heaven and God says, good and faithful servant. I don't know about you, but that's what I want to hear. You know, that, that God says, you didn't give up. You didn't sacrifice. I mean, you didn't uh, uh, um, compromise, but you sacrificed. You know, you didn't compromise in this, but you sacrificed. You know, you, you didn't give up. You kept on going. So let's not grow weary of doing good. And one of the ways in which we don't grow weary by doing good is by us, first of all, placing ourselves in the right position to where we are doing the good that we've been put on this earth to do. Let's do the good that fits in well with who we are and who God has designed us to be. Romans chapter 5 verse 3 and 8 says, more than that we rejoice in our sufferings knowing that suffering produces endurance and endurance produces character and character produces hope and the hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. In Romans chapter 5, what we're seeing is, is rejoice in our sufferings. It's something that we rejoice in. Why? Because we're in love with it. Because it refreshes us. We rejoice in it. I rejoice in the fact that this is happening inside of my life. Why am I rejoicing in the fact where everyone else is saying I should be crying, I should be moping, I should be bitter, I should be depressed. I'm saying no, 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 no. I'm happy in this moment. Why? Because I'm right where God wants me to be. I am right in the spot where I am I'm living out my purpose. I'm living out my calling. I'm able to be and do all that it is that God has placed me on this earth to do and to be. And so I'm going to keep doing good. I'm going to keep pouring into people's lives. John chapter 4 verse 32. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you know nothing about. This is this was the whole Jesus and Jesus at the well moment. This is what he said. He says, I have food to eat that you know nothing about. Teach and you got to do it. You know, this is um, the, 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 what I'm trying to say in, in my notes to kind of remind me is this idea that we teach and you got to do it. You know, you know it's, it's this idea of I don't just consume, 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 but I understand the purpose behind the consuming in which I do. I consume, I read that book, not just so that it helps me, but so that it empowers me to be able to help others. It gives me an avenue by which to communicate truths to people, to help people get from A to Z in their lives. And so you have to understand that that book and all the information in which God has prepared you for and God has put inside of you for the season that you find yourself in, it is not so that you can just be so smart and so amazing, even though you are so smart and you are so amazing, but it is for the purpose of God. It is for God to use you and God wants to use you. I know that that's one of the hardest things for a lot of us as Christians really to get around our head around is this idea that God wants to use me. God can use me. And yes, the truth is, is that God can use you. The truth is God wants to use you. The mind is so important. You know, when we talk about this idea of moving forward, we talk about this idea of working and preparing ourselves and prepping ourselves, we have to understand the importance of getting not only our physically being right, but our mentally we're being right. Proverbs chapter 23, verse seven, it says this, for as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, say he to thee, but his heart is not with thee. I will complete this common theme while doing research on a marathon, you know, is that I, you know, as I would research in this, you know, it talked about the, the uh, marathon mentality is that, you know, you have people who have prepped, some of them are prepped their whole life, some of them are prepped the last six months, some of them are prepped the last year, no matter where they find themselves, they all have a mentally have to get, they get to, so they have prepared themselves physically for the race, okay, they, which is awesome and amazing, they have prepared themselves physically, but there's a point where it becomes less physical and it becomes more mental. And, and it's in that moment when that thought goes, man, it just would be easier if I just sat down right here and I didn't give up. They say the runner has to get to a place in their mind where they say, no, I'm going to complete this. Make up in your mind that you're going to complete 
the good work in which God has placed you in. Can make it up in your mind. And once it's in your mind, the rest of your body will follow. You know, have the right mindset is key. But what is as important is our language and our words. What are you saying about your life and your situation? When we are talking about you're continuing to do good, what are you saying about what you're doing? What are you saying? Are you saying, oh, well, you know, life is, uh, you know, or are you saying, you know what? It's awesome. It's amazing. You know, you know what? I'm going to keep going. You know, and that's about the language in which we use. Let's use the right language. Let's not use words like I can't or I won't or this will never happen. It might not happen. And it goes a better phrase. It might not happen now, but there's a season when it is coming. It might, you know, it, it's, it's kind of like I was in a conversation with somebody and they were saying, you know, I'm too poor to do, and, I, and fill in the blank. They, they, we were talking about something particular. And, and my wife looked at the person and said, no, 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 no. Wrong way of looking at it. Wrong word, choice of words. She says, no, I'm making a choice right now to, to not do this because I'd rather spend my money on you fill in the blank. See, it's, it's all about the perspective and the mindset in which we use and our words locate where our mind is. Our words locate where our heart is, okay? So let's make sure that if you hear yourself saying things that are negative, if you hear your thing, yourself saying, it's, it's, it's not, it's, it's just a way of locating where you're at. Where are you? You know what I'm saying? And the best way to kind of bring the indication of that is by listening to the words in which you use, okay? Um, the other thing is, is I will finish, I will finish this marathon. I will finish it. Um, I will finish it. You know, keep saying that to my, I will finish it. I will finish my race. I will finish my race. I will finish my race. Remember the first point in which we talked about in the sense of, you know, not becoming weary is that we got to do the good work. We got to find the right good work to do. That fits into the pattern of who we are as believers, the workout. Remember I said these tie in all into a marathon runner. The marathon work runner does the work. The next thing the marathon runner understands is the importance of recovery, of taking the time or taking the day off in order Order for their body to recover and as believers we need to understand that as we are doing the good work even though it might be a work that we are in love with that we are in passionate about we have to learn how to refuel or we have to learn how to allow our body to recover from the work in which we did rest is so important so this is what you've got to do you've got to schedule it and you've got to do it often you've got to schedule it and you've got to do it often whether if it's you taking a trip down to Monterey Ray for a weekend. You need to do it often, okay? Stop allowing life to just happen. The art of racing in the rain. Uh, uh, you, you know, I um, th there is a movie called The Art of Racing. You know, I'm reading you guys my notes and I should be doing that, but I should be looking at it just for any moment, but I'm reading it out loud to you guys, so sorry. I apologize. It says The Art of Racing in the Rain movie. I don't know if you guys have um, seen this movie before, but it's, it's a movie... Um, uh, it says, when I'm in a, in a race car, I'm the creator of my own destiny. That, that, that's the phrase that he says. He, he goes, when I am in a car, a, a race car, I am the creator of my destiny. And you have to understand is that you are the driver of your life. And you've got to be someone who understands the importance of being behind the wheel, the importance of understanding that rest is something that you don't just put up, keep putting off, keep putting off, keep putting off, keep putting off, but you've got to prioritize it. You've got to schedule it and then you've got to do it. Another quote from that uh, verse is the best drivers focus only on the present. I mean, the best drivers only focus on the present, never dwelling on the past, never committing to the future. Okay, you, you know, he, he talks about this, this, this idea that when you are in a race car, okay, it's the moment that is so important. It's the moment that is so important. Too many of us, we get to a place be, because we're, you know, because we're not in a place of recovery, because we're not in a place of rest, that we get so focused on what's ahead, and then we get so focused on what's behind us, okay? We get so focused on what's ahead, and then we get so focused on what's behind us. And really, we should learn from the things that, we, that have come behind, but yet we also should be prepping for the future. But one of the best ways that you can and prep for the future is understanding the importance of now. Understand the importance of now. 
What am I doing now while I'm making this turn? What am I doing now as a father, as I'm raising these, I have three beautiful young girls, as I'm raising these girls, am I losing the moment of now or, or, or you know, in order to try to prep for my future? And yes, there are moments when I do do that, when I'm not the a-okay dad that I should be and, 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 I, and I miss lose track and I, and I get unfocused and I, and I forget about the now because I'm so enamored by their future or I'm so, you know, beat up by my past. But I want to encourage us. No, 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 no. Focus on the now and understand that we can learn from the past, but the now is just as important. But yet we also, because the now prepares us for the future, the now prepares us for what's to come. The now prepares us for what it is that God wants to do and the doors that he wants to open us because of the good things that we are doing now. Okay. So those are two quotes from that movie, The Art of Racing in the Rain. You know, it's an awesome move, movie. I encourage any, all you guys to, to watch it. Here goes the last thing. So the first thing was we work. The second thing is 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 we learn, how, we know how to recover. Um, we know to let our body recover. And the last thing as a marathon, marathoner, we have to know how to fuel ourselves, okay? Get into the source. You know, here at Cityscape Church, we have something that we call the discipleship compass. There's four things. We try to tell people, measure yourselves from one to five, one to, to five, okay? You know, one being the, the lowest, five being the highest in this area. How are you doing in these four areas, okay? And this is a discipleship compass. The first thing is, how are you doing with the reading of your Bible? You know, one through five, how are you doing with that? How how are you doing with that? You know, you mark it if you're doing okay, you know, you maybe need to do a little bit better. You might be like two or three, you know, maybe you're someone who's just knocking that out of the park. That's number five. Okay. The second thing we ask people to do is to measure prayer. How's your prayer life? How is, how are you doing with just opening up your mouth and talking to God? How are you doing in, in, in that area of your life? The second, the third thing is how are you doing with the sharing of your faith? How are you doing with the sharing of your faith? Letting people know about the blessings and the things in which you have experienced and just letting people know about how awesome God is, you know, and, and really this isn't about being, I'm not asking you how good are you doing what you're sharing about standing on a soapbox and having a sign that says everyone's going to hell or you're going to hell. No, no, I'm talking about in the sense of sharing your faith, sharing the idea, sharing the concepts, you know, is it, you know, with your kids, is it with, you know, you know, your neighbor, you know, it, it's, it's the whole idea of how are you doing with preaching and proclaiming the gospel on your daily life. And, and, and I love this because, you know, um, it, this is not just about being on, you know, a stage. It's not just about being on, you know, you know um, TV. It's not just about being on YouTube. It's not just about being on some type of stage of some sort in, in, in regards to you're sitting there and you're telling people, John 3.16 says, for God so loved the world. No, no, no. What happens is this is our opportunity as Christians to preach the gospel without ever using words. It's the opportunity for us to do good inside of our community without literally having to have a Bible verse, but because we're living out that Bible verse, we are we are displaying or we are actively, you know, tangibly taking the gospel from you know, you know our tablets or our, our, our physical Bible books, and we're actually bringing them and showing people the 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 life behind them. For God so loved the world that He gave, and so the I become a giver to the people inside of my community. Why? Because God first gave to me. And because God first gave to, to me, now I have the ability to give. And I'm not just thinking about just myself, but I'm thinking about other people. So the gospel coming alive in our love. How are you doing with the sharing of your faith? And this is the last area. How are you doing with the memorization of scripture? The Bible says, I've hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Maybe one of the reasons why we're battling or struggling in a certain area of our life is because we're not hiding God's word inside of our heart. I've, I've hidden my word inside of my heart so that I might not sin against you. You know, I love that verse. You know, it, it, it's, you know it's, it's absolutely amazing where it sits. And the author does a great job inside of that verse of, of giving us a, a, a principle by which to live on. The verse before it talks about this idea is, is, is that God is, is um, he's able to be found. You know, we seek and we find him. And then, you know, I've hidden those words in which God has given me into my heart so that I might not sin against you. And then the next thing, next verse after that talks about 
of this idea of teaching, where Jesus, is, it says that God teaches us. He, 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 he leads us and he teaches us. And, and, it's, and, and, and so grab the concept behind all that is that I'm seeking, you know, and a lot of people think about, well, I'm seeking God, but I can't find him. But the promise and the word of, of, of God is, is that if we seek him, we will find him. And as I find that word, as I find that word that I can live by, that I can find that word that will help me to keep doing good works. As I go and I find that word that will help me to get up every single morning and that, that find that word that helps me to become a better father. As I find that word that helps me to become a better, you, you know, you know, uh, an employee or a better boss. As I find that word, I hide that word and I don't hide it in a sense of to kind of keep it other people away, but I, not, not in that sense, but you do at times, you hide it to protect it. I protect it from my own thoughts. I protect it from the patterns and the beliefs in the world in which we, we, we live. I protect it. I'm not hiding it from people to keep it out of their hands. I'm hiding it so that I can keep it and hold it and, and, and not only and, and cherish it, but not only so that I can cherish it, but so that it can change my life so that I can change other people's lives. See, it's that additional step. And then lastly, it's like I take that word and a lot of times we all receive words, but yet we're like, man, I don't have understanding about this. I just have this one area that I understand about it, but I don't understand it completely. Completely. And what the God says is that in that next verse is that he will teach us is that he doesn't just leave us there with our own thoughts and our own but beliefs. And he says, I will teach you how to do it. And I, I, awesome. Memorization scripture. How are you doing with that? Got off track for a little bit. Sorry. One through five. How are you doing with that? John chapter 15 says, remain in me and I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. Verse five says, I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. You know, I, I love that. Apart from him, we can do nothing. And so those are the three things in which we need to remember. So that just as a marathon, we're running a marathon. Life is a marathon, okay? It's not just a sprint and stop letting to stop having that point of view of it just being a sprint, a sprint that lasts, you know, minutes, a sprint that lasts seconds. But yet this marathon is for a lifetime. It is long distance. And so we've got to remember in order for us to keep doing good, to avoid weariness, the first thing we need to do is we need to remain consistent with our workout, consistent consistent with doing good, finding that perfect workout for us, finding that good stuff that is good for us to do, to do pour good into the world. We find our place in doing good. There you go. The second thing is recovery, taking the time to rest. Not only do we schedule it, but then we do it. We don't just schedule it and mark it off as something that is negotiable, but we make it non-negotiable. Those family vacations, make them non-negotiable. Those, those, those days where you take the walks in the park, make those non-negotiable. The days when you go to the gym, maybe that's the way you relieve stress, make those non-negotiable, okay? And then the last thing is we fuel ourselves. We fuel, fuel ourselves with the word of God. We fuel ourselves with prayer. We refuel ourselves by sharing our faith. We fuel ourselves through the memorization of scripture. We fuel ourselves. We fuel ourselves. Just as a car needs to be fueled on a daily or weekly basis, so do we. We need to be fueled, okay? And so there you go. There goes the, um, you know, my thoughts, you know, as you guys celebrate 16 years of um, being pastors at The Way, I want to congratulate you once more on this an amazing milestone amazing milestone you know what i'm saying with so many churches all over our country you know um struggling and really kind of making a decision to, to give it all up. I want to honor you guys and thank you guys for your guys' commitment to keep going, your commitment to keep moving forward. And I want to thank you guys for not not only the, what you've done for Genesis and I as a um, family, but also as a church and the beacon of hope that you guys are to so many people, not only in, 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 this, in, in this country, but all around the world. And so I want to thank you guys. But let's end in prayer. Dear Father in heaven, we thank you. Lord, we thank you for who you are. I thank you for the McBrides. I thank you for the Way family, God. And I pray, Lord, that you just would cover them all, Lord. You'd watch over them, Lord. And Father, as they grab a hold of this concept about it's not a sprint, but it's a marathon, God, I pray that you would constantly refill them. God, I pray, Father, for them as a church, just as the early church prayed for boldness, boldness to reach out. 
boldness to, I also pray the same thing over them as a congregation, for boldness to keep doing the good work in which they are doing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You guys have an absolutely amazing day.